Good evening, and welcome to Maysville. Uh, before we have our invitation, uh, we've got a few announcements. Our uh, invitation song will be number 677, 677. And our closing, pra our closing prayer is by Doug Deaton. Now, Saturday night is the ham and turkey dinner. I'm supposed to give a big plug for this. Saturday night, here, the ham and turkey dinner, 6 p.m. Uh, the ham and turkey will be provided. Y'all bring everything else and have a good time, all right? Let's see. The fruit baskets will be prepared Sunday, December 14th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, that, I take it that it's here. Uh, the last of the names will be on the bulletin board tonight. Please check for additions or deletions. If you would like to help with this project, please contact Mike Broad. The Ugly Sweater Christmas Party for all the teens and college-age students will be Sunday, December 14th at Seth and Jill's house. After evening services, tacos will be provided. Please bring drinks, desserts, and $10, dirty, a $10 Dirty Santa gift. Also, the Santa Breakfast will be Saturday, December 20th at 9 a.m. here at the building. Please bring a breakfast food to eat. Also, the community, uh, uh, Tim went over the, the schedule for the community outreach. This will be posted out in the bulletin, out on the bulletin boards. So when you get a chance to look at that and refresh yourselves with the dates. Um, Ladies Night Out will be tomorrow night at 6 at Leanne Richards' house. Please bring your favorite Christmas food. The Ladies Helping Hands, Thursday, December 11th at 10 a.m. Uh, will bring good, will meet. The Ladies Helping Hands, Thursday, December 11th at 10 a.m. We're gonna have a meeting. Bring goodies for the bags for your sick and shut-in. Please uh, plan to go to lunch afterwards. The Secret Pals will meet next Sunday night after services at Sue Wirt's house. Bring finger foods and a $15 gift. If you're not in the Secret Pals, you're invited to come and join in the fellowship. Let's see. Check the list in the foyer for food items that are needed for the community outreach day, uh, which is just two weeks away. All right, that's all I have. Rick. When I spoke to Tim about the opportunity of being up here tonight, I already had a topic in mind. And it's kind of funny, I was sitting here last Wednesday when Don Jupiter got up here and started talking about my topic. But that's okay. Uh, he, he was talking about words, and I got, you know, sort of uh, panicked a little bit and said, no, no I, I, I've got what I want to say. Because uh, there's just one thing that you can always remember, Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 10, saying there's nothing new under the sun. What I'm here tonight to talk about is nothing that's new. It's, it's, I have nothing new that I can tell you that you haven't heard before or it hasn't been in the Bible before. Part of the thoughts I have tonight, I took from a book by Hal Urban. Uh, it's not a religious book. It's more of a motivational type book or a, a positive living type book. The book is called Positive Words, Powerful Results. Uh, in his introduction, he said one of his reasons was to increase awareness of the impacts that our words can have. You know, we take words for granted. Uh, we tell our kids, you know, don't worry about what they say about you. you know, what, they're, they're just words. What, what, what they're saying about you can't hurt. But we know better than that. You know, we take words for granted, and how are we? Use me? We'll walk up to somebody, hi, how are you? And I'm fine. You know, it's good to see you. You know, I'm glad, glad you're here. All that kind of stuff. But once we really think about what words do, how powerful they are, it's been said that, you know, a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. But think about it. What is a word? How would you define word? 
a word is something that paints a picture in your mind. An example of that would be uh, that Hal Urban used in his book was he, he was going to give you a word or he, he gave one of his classes a word one time and said, now I want you, when I give you this word, to keep your mind blank. Don't think about anything at all. That ought to be pretty easy to do, shouldn't it? You know, you, you know, I've been accused of having a blank mind before. So, you know, it ought to be pretty easy to do. But he said, all right, I'm going to give you a word, and I want you not to, to, to think about, to picture anything. We're going to try that. All right, the word that I want to give you tonight is the word truck. All right, how many of you was able to keep a picture of a truck out of your mind? May, it may have been a pickup truck. It may have been... Uh, you know, Mr. Cecil drives those big trucks. It may have been the type of truck he drives. You know, it may have been a fire truck or anything, but words mean something. They're very powerful. You know, words can uh, set the whole mood for something. In his book, he gave a list of probably 40 or 50 words that set the mood that would be a negative mood. I just copied the first 11 of them because once I read those first 11, a picture came to my mind. Those words were destroy, jail, suffer, hate, damage, beat, crash, riot, agony, revenge, murder. Those were the first 11 words he written. He wrote. He wrote this, well, the book's copyrighted 2004. Sounds like the book was written just here, here recently, doesn't it? when we think about what's going on in the news. Those words leave you kind of depressed, don't they? Those words can really leave you kind of depressed. We think about, you know, first thing that comes to my mind was, was uh, in Missouri, the, the riots that were going on there. But he also had a second list of words that could set a mood. So I copied 11 of those words. Love, friend, kindness, peace, forgive, joy, heal, honor, hope, strengthen, trust. You think about those words for a little while. And what kind of mood does that put you in? A peaceful, hopeful mood. So words, just words by themselves, have a very powerful meaning. One of the things that uh, amazes me is the way words are creeping into our vocabulary. I'm not talking about new words like, uh, let's see, what was it? There, there were some new words added to the dictionary every year. I'm not talking about those. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about words that work in have worked their way, words have worked their way into our working vocabulary, our everyday day vocabulary. You hear words now on television that you didn't hear when I was growing up. You, you would not hear those words. You wouldn't hear anything that would be mentioned, concepts that were mentioned. So are, are we becoming desensitized to these words? I hear words now that everybody says, no, well, that's, that's just the way people talk nowadays. And if you ask them, well, do you talk that way in front of your parents since a kid? And they say, yeah, they talk that way in front of me too. Well, I, I guess what I would like to ask people like that is, is there anywhere that you don't talk that way? And if they say yes, then I say, well, you found another one. You don't talk that way here. The words that we d use show our character. Not just the words that we use, but how we use the words. Are we using these words in a complaining type manner? You know, there are, there are several different ways that we need things we need, things we need to consider. Swearing in crude language. You know, where is it appropriate? 
isn't appropriate for the movies now to have that in there. Well, you know, they said, well, we've got got to make the movie realistic. So we've got to have those words in there. I love to read. I cannot read Stephen King. That's just me. He scares me to death. But uh, it's it's like like Joan says, she, she won't read them because of the language he uses. But that's realistic. Do you know that Stephen King is used in our high schools as an author for style. They use his style. You know, he, 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 he has written essays about how to write. Where is it appropriate? Why, why, why is it appropriate now? Another way that we use words in, in a negative way would be complaining or moaning. Moaning about things are going on, whining about things. Does it seem like the more we have, the more we complain? The more things that we possess, and when things don't start going exactly the way we want them to, the more we want to whine and complain. How about mean-spirited and and hurtful words? I guess I'm becoming more conservative the older I get. You know, Don Rickles was a great, great entertainer, they said. What was his style? The insult. You know, you can have fun with words. You can have fun with words. But you never know when you're going to step over that boundary, uh, over that line. You never know. Uh, I'll do it too. You know, I'll, I'll kid around with people, then all of a sudden, hey, did, did I really say something that, that offended that person? When really, I'm just playing around with them. So let's be conscious of that. Rude and inconsiderate language is another. Proverbs 15, 4 says, A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Words that are spoken rashly and thoughtlessly can cause pain that lasts for years. I can remember some of the things I said as a a teenager. I had a bit of an attitude, I think. I mean, I was a teenager. But I'm embarrassed at some of the things that, not just what I said, but the, the thoughtless way that I said things. There are several small pieces of Proverbs I'd like to read real quick. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. That's found in verse 424. Violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. 1011. Whoever spreads slander is a fool. 1018. Reckless words pierce like a sword. 1218. He who speaks rashly will come to ruin. 133. A scoundrel plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. A perverse man stirs up his up dissension, and a gossip separates close friends. That's sixteen twenty eight. He whose tongue is deceitful falls into trouble. Seventeen twenty. A fool's lips brings bring him strife, and his mouth invites a beating. That's eighteen six. And a fool's mouth is his undoing. Eighteen seven. Where do these words come from? Where do our words, our speech come from? Luke 6, 45. For a man's words will always express what has been stored in his heart. What's been stored in his heart. Zig Ziglar is probably known by several of you who have been in the Cyril's world before, a motivational speaker, a writer from several years ago. He asked a question one time uh, in one of his speeches that I heard. uh, Would you allow someone to come into your living room and dump a bag of trash? 
And of course, the answer is no. Then he asked the question, then why do you let everything else dump trash into your brain, into your heart? Screen out the trash. Screen out the influences. Keep that from coming into your life. Another way to make sure that we uh, screen out this is to start the day with a positive input. Or sometime during the day, be sure that you spend that time reading something, concentrating, reading the Bible on something that's positive. We've all heard the uh, saying that garbage in, garbage out. Well, it works the same way. Change the G's in there from garbage to good. Put good in and what comes out. Good comes out. Philippians 4.8. Fix your minds on whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and praiseworthy. It says to fix your minds. Make a, con a, 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 a conscious effort to fix your minds on whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and praiseworthy. Use that as a screen. Now we've discussed how to use the use of words show our character, and we need to consider the words that show the character of God. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to it to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What is it God's promises? Let's look at John 15. It's, I'm going to read John 15, 1 through 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered. And they gather them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. What does God promise us? If we'll abide in him, if we'll abide in him. Every time we gather together here at Maisel, we be sure that we offer the opportunity for anyone that has any spiritual needs for those to be met. It may be that you're here this evening and have never obeyed the gospel. We offer that opportunity. It also may be that if you're here tonight and have other spiritual needs and need to ask for the prayers of the congregation, we're willing for that also. If you have any needs at this time, please come forward. There's a stranger at the
250, 250. Thank you, Rick. We'll have the first and the um, fourth stanzas of this before we'll be dismissed in prayer. <clears> How <throat> sweet, how heavenly. for all the blessings that you shower down upon us we thank thee for these things but we know that all of these things that we have here in this life are simply temporary pray that you'll help us to store treasures in heaven we thank thee for the love that you've shown us pray that you'll help us to put this love into action and help us to show this kind of love to those that we come in contact with each day Pray that you be with Dot and Emmett and others of the congregation that are not at their best. Pray that you'll be with them, strengthen them, bring them back to us. Thank thee for the love that you've shown us in sending your only son to die on that cross so that we can one day have our home in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 